What's up everyone? Day two in the uh, EcoBoost Mustang, or if you're from somewhere else, you might say EcoBoost. There's a huge discussion about that on the Facebook group that uh, I troll a little bit. Um, so, I spent last night putting this blow valve kit on, and it's pretty amazing, actually. I can't believe how much uh, boost and turbo efficiencies left on the table by the OEMs because they have that leaky stupid plastic valve thing in the uh, from the factory um, but one of the biggest things I saw right away driving was that when you used to punch it and you'd be on a good pull once it would reach peak boost you would see it just the boost moving up and down going all over the place and now with a uh, blow off valve that actually seals, it's, um, it's, it's just dead steady. I mean, like I've never seen the boost gauge on this car on boost actually be dead steady at a number. And that's actually what it does. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm sort of starting to like this car. Although, you know, I think the Mustang's really designed for guys that are at least 5'10", 5'11", 6'2". Cause like if you're like a shorty like me, you know, like five eight, five nine, you're like you're sitting halfway to the door unless you're, you know, lean all the way back, uh, like you're rolling through the hood. But so every time you get in and out of the car, it's like you got to push this door halfway through instead of being able to get to the, you know, the end of the door. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So I kind of fit better in like an S2000. Um, but I'm pretty impressed with this thing I like it I like how it performs um, I remember driving a v6 Mustang a long while back and I like the punch in that thing and I feel like the EcoBoost might be getting a bad rap because when the boost comes on it's not as snappy as um, you know you would get with like the v6 but it's just really because there's a lot of shit going on that uh, you know they had to do for emissions and whatnot so um the boost quality is not completely there necessarily um but you know in general uh this thing is pretty good i almost mustang myself the other day it was raining so uh i went and did some maneuvers a couple donuts and uh i didn't get mustang but i could I could kind of understand why the guys in, the, in those videos just eat shit a little bit because the car likes to rotate early, like say the first 90 degrees, it just likes to go. And if you don't know what to do and, and stick with the 90 or where to just kind of like slowly lift off the throttle, you're probably going to fuck yourself up pretty good. Um, but this thing has a weird like... Once you get past 90, it sort of it sort of snaps, and the ass end of the car just kind of wants to kind of uh, control the rotation after that. So I, I don't know. I mean, I it, another time I stayed in it pretty good, and it wanted to come all the way around. So either either you got to be committed and just go 180, or do a full 270. But like once you're past 270, you better go another round because you're not pulling it back it's not one of those cars where you can just kind of feather the throttle and you know stop yourself mid mid donut and just keep going well that's bone stock anyways but the suspension is pretty soft i went kind of corner to corner it felt like when i tried to snap the wheel back the other direction um so you know mustang guys that have nailed the curb i coming out of a driveway i could probably empathize with you um but you know i think a lot of you are just popping out of throttle a little too early um and you know I, I was guilty of that i used to have a turbo car and when the stupid thing came on boost before i knew how to do donuts before i knew how to do a decent 180 um i got out of the throttle really fast when the boost came on and lit the tires up and swung back the other way and yes i was in the island that was a long time ago um i don't know I wish I could take this thing on the track drifting. I'll probably have to just, I mean, this is an automatic, right? Cause it's, I don't have a manual. Uh, 
and I'll tell you, it breaks the tires loose really easy. All you gotta do, you don't even have to be in sport, you can be in like regular driving mode, stomp on the gas pedal, and uh, literally just sit there and sit on the gas pedal. I'm sorry, I said gas pedal, I meant brake. Stomp on the brake pedal, stomp on the gas. As you start to see the boost come up, the tires will just let loose because the brakes can't hold them. And um, you, know, you can do whatever the hell you want uh, after that. I was telling a buddy of mine yesterday who's actually on the Formula D circuit right now. Uh, I wish what they would do with these auto manual cars is come up with a way to where when you pull the e-brake it neutralizes the transmission so you can do 180s pretty easily because you know the thing that's crappy about an automatic trans car is you can't clutch kick the fucking thing right so that's kind of a pain in the ass and that's the only thing keeping me away from wanting to have a trans car you know maybe somebody can make like a fake clutch pedal that neutralizes the transmission and then you can you can sort of cheapy clutch kick it but then you'd probably kill the the torque converter whenever it would go neutral and then pop back in real hard you wouldn't actually break the the back loose or anything you'd have a pretty you'd have to have a pretty damn good torque converter um to be able to take that kind of abuse but what if this is a big what if what if somebody had a thing where you pull the e-brake, it goes into neutral, and then once you drop the e-brake back down, it's back in drive or whatever the hell it is uh, gear it's supposed to be in uh, at the speed you're going at, or whatever gear you're holding last. Um, would that be hard to do as a product? I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't make like electronic boxes and shit like that. I make kind of uh, more mechanical type parts. Uh, so. Uh, heading up to Tito, buddy of mine, fabricator, guy I've worked with for many years, go racing with him sometimes, uh, and he's, we're going to do a little bit of fabrication because we're going to have two of these cars in one spot. Uh, actually, my buddy Jackie, who owns Ambit Wheels, uh, is going to have his Mustang there, and uh, Tito had made him a whole you know, EcoBoost front mount kit for it. And um, we got a. We're just gonna test fit one of these pipes, and uh, maybe run our the uh, R55 valve on it too. And so I can test that and see how that works on this car. Um, so that yeah, was up late, pretty late last night, doing R and D, trying to button up the last little things on this car before I came over to Tito's and. You know, of course, USPS lost a bunch of parts that I sent him, and they didn't deliver, and he needed it on time. So I also had to get a bunch of parts together for this uh, single turbo 335 kit he's finishing up. Um, and so, yeah, I tried to save money by shipping USPS, and it was only going to be five bucks, but instead of you know 20 bucks for the UPS or whatever, and that was the biggest mistake because UPS probably would have gotten it there. Instead, USPS totally screwed the whole fucking thing up. Um, yeah. Mm. So now it's actually probably going to cost... I mean, how much does the gas cost to go up there right now? I'm going to spend $30 in gas? $40 in gas plus my time? Well, I'm going to get some development done anyway, so it's not that big a deal. Um, but, yeah. Well, driving right past Keystone here in Corona. Uh, so... Uh, Looks like they're shipping parts out. Nice. Uh, when I get over there, I'm going to continue to video a little bit so you guys can see what the process is like uh, when you're trying to make parts. It ain't easy. This is part of what R&D is. Because there's no manufacturer that's going to help you out unless you're huge and massive and so you gotta go get your own cars, you gotta go and uh, test fit on your own cars. Luckily for me, now, a lot of these car, turbo cars are available in the rental fleet, so just rent it a couple days, measure up on it, test on it. You don't have to deal with customers bitching and moaning about their car being down for a week, like you know, it was in the old days. Um, 
and uh, you have an ohm on a bunch of stuff, just rent a car, a couple hundred bucks, r and done. So the valve that I got on the Mustang right now is the SB valve, which you know is the V3 latest version of the valve, and it's um it's a bigger valve uh, than uh, what it started life off with. It's got like 40% more flow, but I don't know if uh, you can hear it if I'm sitting here playing with it and stop and go traffic. Um, I don't know, let's see, can you hear this? This car is super responsive. It's, I'm not even having the solenoid control the dumb thing. Yeah, the SB valve's got kind of a unique sound to it. I can't wait to put an R35 in here and see what an R35 sounds like when it goes off. Or an R55. I, I wonder if an R55 is going to be loud. I mean, this thing actually has bigger turbos than my truck, so... Sounds good. I love how that thing sounds. Yeah, I mean, I set this thing up so you can even recirculate it if you're not into the sound. Um, but um, most of my customers are customers. Synapse customers are there for the sound. Um, which is kind of sad because actually, like performance is the main reason why you should buy them, be buying the product because it's what makes it completely different. And uh, people wonder, like, you know, why do we, why do we put it on a separate pipe altogether? Because that's just what makes it perform better. Is if it's purpose built. If I sit there and try to put a blow off valve on some existing shitty flange and some crappy diameter pipe that uh, the OEM already made, that's made out of plastic and it's got all kinds of airflow dampening dampeners and and crap like that in it to do all kinds of ugly shit I mean it's just products not gonna perform um, and uh, I don't know to me I'm kind of a purist that's what it's all about is having something that uh, performs well for you so let's see can you hear this it's fairly loud loud in the cabin I mean I'll tell you it's kind of rare that uh, you'll get something this loud scare bunnies with this all right just got the Tito shop here and uh, you can see by the uh, collection of cars here it's RX-7 land yeah there's a Porsche there but yeah that's mostly Kind of a fluke. Um, it's got all kinds of shit here. Let's take a look at this single turbo 335 setup he's got going on. I just uh, I brought him one of our new manual boost controllers because he needs to be able to control boost on this thing instead of relying on the ECU to do it. And um, you're about to see the most professional both bottom and, and top. Automotive and fabrication top. bay in the world. It's called a fucking parking lot. Peter, I was trying to explain <laughs> interrupt and bleed. Here we got, here we got, we I got, got we got Cuban, we got Mexican. We got Cuban, we need, we need your you know, Mexican, course, I got Chinito. Yeah, yeah. What? I got course, lost. I, lost. I was explaining uh, yeah, I was trying interrupt and bleed and I, I got lost. Uh, you could, I was thinking you could do both on the bottom. You could do both, gate. yeah, you could do whatever the hell you want. And on the top. Yeah, but the interrupt is... It, it just, it's just it, how you want to control it. The interrupt is making it less than what it actually is, and bleed is actually just bleeding, bleeding out like out. a T. No, okay. no, yeah, so you have the T, right? Uh -huh. And then bleed is like, you come off the T, mm -hmm. so the wastegate's always getting pressure. Interrupt, you're taking pressure away from the wastegate, so the wastegate's always shut. Okay. And so, like, um, it's good because it makes the turbo spool up faster mm -hmm. on interrupt. Okay. On interrupt? On interrupt, yeah. To, to the top, though. No, no, no. It doesn't have Matter. to be through the top. No. You can do it through the bottom. Better it just bleeds, bleeds bleed a softer is, way for the boost to come in a little bit. It could creep. Or it could open 
sooner. With what? With uh, interrupt. With no, with uh, bleed. No, with Not bleed. With bleed, actually, it's always getting boost, so the wastegate so might take crap. It could open, yeah, and yeah. then you get lagged. Yeah. So we should run it. I don't know about lag, but the wastegate's gonna crack you well, sooner. Yeah, you, you start losing exhaust energy. Um, oh, that looks good. Yeah, it doesn't. But really it's, fit though. It's, it's, too, it's not in there yet. It's way too tight. How far do, does this have to go? Does this what? go on the other side of the V-band? Um, I would put it on the other side of the V-band. Yeah. Okay. Fit it in there. Yeah. You know, honestly though, does it really matter? I mean, it's not like it's gonna fly off or it's gonna get hit yeah. with a lot of G's or anything. As long as, as, as long as it's as long as it's stuck in there, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, and as long as it's not gonna burn up, and as long as it's not burning up everything around it, I think you're you're okay. See if you can catch the spring running. Yeah, good luck. Dude, you know honestly, yeah, those those springs good. are just a fucking gimmick. A lot of times, I would I would use um safety zip wire. I don't know, fucking oh, zip tie. Use if use uh, a safety wire. I'm bringing it. Cause those springs relax anyways. I'd I'd use safety wire. Safety wire the thing. Not a bad little setup. One seventy four. What is it? Ninety one seventy four yet far. So I think the compressor wheel is like sixty eight millimeter. Is it spooling too slow or? I I mean it spools really fast, but I feel like it's just uh, be a little faster for a EFR. It is a three liter though. I got the tape too A small AR two eight four. Yeah, turbine. Hmm. That's not safety wire, bro. Peter, tell him that's not safety wire. What is that? Uh, yeah, that's like guitar wire. No, this isn't guitar. No, nah, dude, safety wire is solid. It'll work. It's like the welding rod. It'll is work. that welding rod? No. no, no. The safety wire is like it. You, you called the safety welding. wire last time, though. No, safety oh, wire is doing... super duper soft, though. This will work, though, wouldn't it? This a Honda? Look at Victor, look at Victor. Yeah, yeah. Request it. Yeah, What's yeah. in it? The primary one? Or the one? Uh, uh, I don't know. I can't. That's an East LA special right there, bro. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a uh, Sinaloa. What'd you say, Sinaloa? Yeah. Sinaloa. <laughs> that's where Victor's from. That's so funny. Dude, you, some Sinaloans are gonna fucking chase your shit now for saying that. Okay. Like, he's making us look bad. That's fine. I told you about my. Did I tell you about my cousin in the Sinaloans? No. Yeah. You good? Here's a manual boost controller. I'm putting on here. It's kind of different. Not different like retarded, but just you know, different. Cause it's not out there. Why are you killing yourself, Tito? Trying to make this uh, little spring around. I need to eat. Race car guys, you're so obsessed. Just trying to work this one little spring in there for this turbo blanket. Yeah, when it's locked now forever. Turbo blanket's not going anywhere, dude. It's like wedged up against the body of the car. Oh, door. Weld rod, safety wire. It's the trick. Little tip on the manual boost controller. Since I designed it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, use a little Teflon tape on the thread. It's gonna be nice and smooth on uh, adjustments. 